eyes. Let's stand together. take a seat can I just say if you didn't like that you may as well go <laughs> just lots more of those Amy, hello evening can you all hear me yeah. I cannot see any of you <laughs> can I step down there yeah great hello um so welcome to this evening's service um it is contemporary carols by our worship band um so I'm just going to pray for us before we start Father God, thank you for bringing us all here tonight. Thank you that you've already prepared this seat for us this evening, each and every one of us. 
Thank you for the, just the joy that you bring. And thank you for every moment of this service that you've already planned out. I invite the Holy Spirit in. I let our weeks pass. I let our days pass and just put them in front of you. All the stuff that's on your mind, just put it in front of God and say, you can have it. Amen. I'm going to invite Brian up to do our reading. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light, some, bur some bursts of light. You populated the nation. You expanded its joy. Oh, they're so glad in your presence. Festival joy. The joy of great celebration sharing rich gifts and warm greetings. For a child has been born for us, a gift of a son for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His name will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of wholeness. His ruling authority will grow and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. He'll rule from the historic David throne over that promised kingdom. He'll put that kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going. With fair dealing and right living beginning now and lasting always. The zeal of God, of the angel armies, will do all this. Alleluia. God is with us. Awesome. So we've just heard this story of this amazing, wonderful counsellor and this, the miracle baby and all the things that Brian just said that I can't remember. <laughs> Um, and we've heard the story of the nativity of how the shepherds and the wise men just wanted to get close to this baby. They wanted to get so close to this miracle baby just to touch him. And tonight, this baby and this God has given us the Holy Spirit that means we can touch this baby. We can touch this miracle. We can speak to this counselor and we can ask this healer to heal us. And I just want us, before we go into worship, just to just ask God, hi, I'm here. I want to talk to you. I want you, this counselor, I want this miracle. I want to be able to talk to you, Jesus, the miracle baby. So I'm just going to give you 30 seconds just to say hi to Jesus um, and just to tell him what you want and what you're expecting tonight of him and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I ask that this mystery baby, this wonderful baby, would just be so present in the service tonight. That this, that all the things that we've asked and all the things we're expecting of you to bring us tonight, the counselor, the healer, the miracle baby, the joy and the peace and the love that we hear about all the time, pray that that is so just tangible to us that we can reach out and touch it. Yeah. 
and that we wouldn't just sing the words that are on the screen and we wouldn't sing the words that we know because all these carols we know and we've heard a million times. I pray that we would sing them with conviction, we would sing them with worship and we would sing them with our whole body because we believe that the miracle baby is here and he is coming. We believe that the counsellor is coming and we believe that the healer is here and he is coming.
God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see. The stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy. 
Let's take a seat. Well, so I'm going to invite Lucy and Fraser up. I just want to capture that, actually, while they're coming up. Um, that song said, no syllable empty or void. And f- I don't know what it means for you, but for me that strikes like for every word that God said every human he created and every star he made. It, there was a purpose in it. It wasn't void. It wasn't empty. He spoke those words, let there be light. And he spoke them with purpose. And when he created you, he said, let there be Tom. And let there be Brian. And let there be Audrey. <laughs> and he said, let there be you. You. You were created for a purpose. You were created to be part of this big God's plan, this galaxy that we've just been singing about, these stars and these, these worlds. God created you to be in that. Um, I don't know if that is anyone is happy to hear that tonight, uh, but if you are, uh, we would love to pray for you at the end of the service. But for now, I am going to invite Fraser to both pray for Lucy and uh, have the reading done for tonight. Yeah, so um, God, I pray that Lucy will be giving your words and you'll bless her and that all nerves and anxiety will be gone and that she can speak your words without any faults or any difficulties and that she just portrays what you want her to do because I know this is something that she's anxious about but I know that she'll smash it. So amen. Right, so this reading is from We Dodo. <laughs> yeah, so it says, There's nothing like hope. It provides calm for the future. So when life hurts and dreams fade, look forward to the blessed hope of the return of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let me just get my pieces of, that's very loud, pieces of paper all sorted. Cool. It's nice to see so many people here. I didn't think it would be this full, so (laughs) the nerves have just gone up a bit more. But um, welcome to St. John's if you, if you don't, mm. is it better there? can hear my breathing. <laughs> um, if you don't normally come, welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lucy. I've been coming to St. John's for nearly eight, nine years. Um, 
that's enough about me. Um, so it's the 12th of December, it's the third Sunday of Advent, and at St. John's we always do this contemporary carol service. We always, around this time of year, start talking about the birth of Jesus. And so I thought, how can I talk about this from a different angle? What I forgot to say was that I'm a journalist. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for people, but as a journalist, I'm always told to think of the angle of the story and think of what I want to say and how I can say it. So I'm going to look at what the birth of Jesus means to me and how it can help us to refocus again on God. So this week for me has been really difficult and really long. Um, No one ever tells you how hard it is starting out in an industry, especially sort of in the media industry. At the moment, it's sort of ad hoc work, but I hope to get sort of longer term work. No one kind of tells you that when you graduate, you don't start where you think you'd start. You kind of start right at the bottom doing literally anything you can to work up to where you should be. I sound like an old record, but I, another thing I hoped for years ago was that something would come along for my cystic fibrosis. Um, and we're all hoping for things. And for me, the birth of Jesus represents this hope. The word hope in the dictionary means a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen a feeling of trust. And hope, which we might define as a certainty of God's goodness, is the gratitude that underlies our Advent waiting. That little sentence was from an Advent book that my mum's um, micro group have been reading, so I can't take credit for that. But, you know, we're in anticipation for this little baby, this special baby, like Amy was saying, the miracle when born in the stable, was completely unaware of how important he would be and what he would mean for each and every single one of us here today, people who've been before us and people in the future. As it said in Isaiah 9, verse 6, for unto us a son is born, unto us a son is given. So hope was born with Jesus. When I was speaking to my mum about how I was preaching, um, I was saying that I didn't know where to start, so for context of this week, I, um, it started out really, really well, and then it got really, really rubbish in the week. had like an existential crisis where I just didn't know what I wanted to do, I was really upset, thought I was rubbish at everything, and so it kind of took a longer time to get the right words and to put down what I hoped that God was telling me to say. So my mum brought this book out, which... I figured out I did for her in 2015, the Christmas of 2015. And so it's a book that's got a devotional verse for each month of the year, each week week of the month. So it's 52. Um, And so she just gave it me and said, you know what, look what's the week commencing, what this week was, which was the verse that Fraser read out which at the bottom of here says John 14, 1 to 3, but I don't know if it is that because I've looked on every single version of that and I don't think it is. So it's from the Bible and I, like, I can say that hand on heart. <laughs> so it's, it's good, it's good stuff. I just can't find exactly where it's from. And if I had, wouldn't have had my little midweek problem, then um, I probably would have found it. But it says, there is nothing like hope. It provides calm for the future So when life hurts and dreams fade, look forward to the blessed hope of the return of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Oh gosh, there's lights down. It's the Holy Spirit moving in this place. It's all good. (laughs) No one's like, yeah. Jesus and God work in many ways, so that could be saying something. (laughs) So, yeah, for me, I tend to... Where was I? Oh, yeah, the book. (laughs) It's totally put me off that. It was so cool. The verse from the Bible, very important. Um, 
And I, tend to, I, t I, saw, I read it and I thought, gosh, that's amazing, bingo, I've got what I want to talk about, how God was speaking to me through this. And I'll often do that with the Bible, I kind of open it up and see what's, what's speaking to me on the page. Um, but God offers ultimate hope by forgiving our sins so that we can be with him in heaven forever. When life seems impossible, God brings eternal hope. And without hope, we give up. Hope helps us cope with the baffling messiness of life because we trust that God is always for us. And so in that sentence when I said hope and trust, for me, I think that hope and trust are totally connected. It says in Proverbs 3, verse 5, trust the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Hope requires one thing, a trust in the one who brings real hope. We've all had such a tough two years. Yeah, coming up two years. It's been so un unusual for all of us. You know, we're all sat here with masks on. We've lost family and friends to COVID. We've lost them to other things. And it's been a time where we've not really been able to connect physically with people and being able to support them in the usual way. But God is still good. And I think we have to trust and hope that things will get better and that God can hold you and give you strength, just as when Mary and Joseph needed strength during their journey to Bethlehem. However we've struggled, it's never too late to come back to God, the one who, as I said, brings the real hope. So whether you've drifted away from God or not, he loves everyone. And the story of the nativity teaches us this. Um, I think last Friday, me and mum and dad went to a outdoor nativity in Crosby. And it was by the community group in another place. I don't know if anyone's heard of it, but it's kind of based around Liverpool. Um, and so it was this outdoor nativity and there was a real camel and that was sort of the plug to go and watch them. Um, and it was sort of walking across and it had like one of the wise men on its back and it was just happy as Larry, just walking around. Um, and I stroked it and that really made me happy. <laughs> um, but in the story and what they said was, um, the angels would obviously go into the wise men and to the shepherds to tell them that the savior was going to be born. And the wise men were like, yes, yes, that's very good. We'll go and we'll get gifts and we'll go and worship him. And the shepherds were like, why us? like we're just shepherds and I don't mean just shepherds nowadays because I come from a family of farmers so that's not true but back then they were just shepherds um, and stereotypically obviously if there's a king being born the wise men being incredibly special and prestigious people would go and the shepherds were kind of normal simple people and that goes to show that God felt that everyone should go and was worthy enough to go and see the newborn king. People from all walks of life were called to meet with Jesus and are still called to meet with Jesus. So again, however much people have struggled or drifted away, there is no one who God isn't ready to meet with. People hope for lots of things. So some might hope for a new job. Some might hope for a baby of their own. People might hope to feel love, or people might hope that COVID goes away. Um, there's a lot of things that are uncertain, and hope is what a lot of is what helps us carry on. You know, I don't know what all your situations are, and what's sort of on your heart, what you've come into this place with tonight. But God does, and I think. You don't need to say anything already to him because he's already sort of got it and holding you. I'm just going to um, read another passage out of Mum's devotional book. <laughs> so this one was actually for the 12th of December. And it says, you're never too far away that he can't hear you when you pray. He knows all your fears, sees all your tears and feels all your pain. I'm just gonna sort of say a prayer. 
Lord, you are love and you love me. Fill me with hope and encourage me to expect you to be constantly generous. Thank you that you're such a faithful God and help me to hope in you and trust your ongoing care. When I experience confusion and fear and pain, may I rest in you, knowing all things are safe in your hands. You make all things work together for our good. Grant me, as you've promised, peace that passes understanding, so I can face the clouds and the darkness, knowing darkness and light are both alike to you. You know, this little baby, the light of the world, the giver of hope, you're never too far away. The hope that we have as Christians and that we pray about you know, you can say, oh, I hope, I hope I'll get a new job or I hope I'll get this. And then you can pray into it and pray about that. Kira's is going to come up now and do a dance to sort of reflect this. Um, it's a wonderful piece of music that means so much to me. You know, God can hold you and give you his strength. I feel this song that she'll be sort of dancing to is a prayer that the angels sang for Mary during her journey to Bethlehem. So as, as Kira's dancing, just think like this Christmas, let's pray for the renewed hope of the birth of this beautiful baby. Amen. Well, cool. To so say just before Kira starts, um, I just want to kind of talk to you about the different styles of worship a little bit. So sometimes we sing and sometimes we dance and sometimes we sit and listen and sometimes we do that together and sometimes we do that by reflecting on God, by watching someone do that on our behalf. Sometimes worship's a bit too painful for us. Sometimes singing, the joy of the Lord is our strength and the joy is coming. And sometimes that's just a bit too painful for us, especially over the last year. Um, and this is Kira worshipping on behalf of us. She is, she's worshipping and she's dancing on behalf of us. And I would love you to worship with her in that, in a way that you can and the way that you feel safe to. And even if that's going, God, I can't sing Joy to the Lord. Um, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to watch Kira and watch God through her. Um, yeah. Uh, we're now going to pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for Advent a time of looking back at the lead up to your life-changing birth, a miracle that brought us hope, grace, and a new life, that we did not need to be separate from God, but with him, humbled by the forgiveness we received. Thank you for the light that you brought, a light that from that very moment we knew would never fail us, a light that forgave, a light that loved, a light that never failed a light that was brought us through failures, losses, and brokenness, a light that has brought us through the loss of people we love, a light that brought us through a devastating pandemic, a light that brought help to the helpless, brought joy to the sadness, brought healing to the pain. However, we must not only remember the light that was, but also the light that is here now and is yet to come in fruitful abundance. Although we may have seen your hope before, or maybe our eyes are yet to open to the light, may we remember that it's not a temporary thing, but something we can rely on, something permanent. Even the smallest light brings light to the darkness. Even a single flame brings light. 
May we always trust that whether we see it as a small flame or a roaring fire. And as we trust more, may it grow and grow fiercely bright. That we know that you, Jesus, are ever present and the never failing hope in every situation, in every fear, in every anxiety, in every pain, in every tear. But simultaneously, let us never forget that you are in the joy, the laughter and the triumph. This Advent, may we remember that you are the triumphant light, healer, miracle, saviour, counsellor and hope of yesterday, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Guys, should we stand together? Um, just while we, uh, go on, up you get, up you get. Just while we sing these last few songs, what, what I think would be really nice to do is just spend a minute, try and catch that thing where you as an individual want God to bring hope or where you as an individual see darkness and you want God to bring light, yeah? These songs that we're singing about uh, are worship and God's presence and the Holy Spirit just invading those places where darkness exists and saying, get lost, you've got no place here, yeah? There's enormous strength and enormous power in the worship that we bring. And we're joining in with what's going on in heaven. And where the worship is, that's where God's kingdom is and that's where the darkness can have no place right so just take a minute catch those one or two things where you want to see hope or you want to bring light and we're going to sing about it and we're going to expect that God starts to move things out of the way yeah father come now while we worship you where the spirit of the Lord is there is you know the ending. We'll try again. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is Healing. freedom. Yes, bring it. Let's go.
Let your majesty and worth fall the earth, fall the earth. Let the rumors of your kingdom, let your name Yeah. 
Yeah, Father God, thank you that you sent your miracle baby. And if you even believe in the slightest bit that Jesus sent that miracle baby to us, however many years ago it was, that he can break down the walls. Fear can leave. Pain can go. The counselor can come in and heal you. Jesus can do that. And even if you've not experienced the big Holy Spirit moment tonight that we all talk about, that fear has left you, I believe, and it says in the Bible that it is, we have to expect it, we have to believe it, because light is coming. Light is coming, freedom is coming. And we have to expect that every day. So I don't know if I'm allowed to do a blessing, but I'm going to read a bit of the Bible and I hope that that's okay. <laughs> Great, fabulous. Um, so it says, peace be with you, and not the peace that we all hug and kiss, because I'm not a hugger. But peace be with you from Jesus, from God, the miracle baby. Brothers and sisters, friends, may God the Father and the Lord Jesus and the miracle, the wonderful counsellor, give you love with faithfulness. And may God's grace and joy and love be on you every single moment of every single day for the rest of this week and leading up to Christmas and forever. Amen. And if anything we've said rings a bell in you, in your heart or in your head, or you're feeling a bit hurt or you're feeling a bit loved, just let one of us know and there's loads of us that would love to pray. Right, we've got one more for you. Stay on your feet. He is... sadness and dread, joy when you can't face getting out of bed. He is real in a world full of fake smiles and fake news, here to make every broken heart new. He is purpose when we wonder, is this really it, the ladder out of life's slimy pit? He is rest when we say, stop the world, I want to get off, fresh air for those of us suffocated by stuff. He is a reason to look up from our tiny screens, peace for those battling anxiety. He is a friend to those feeling lonely in a crowd, wings for the oppressed held down on the ground. He is wisdom for the ones who can't seem to get it right, the missing piece in the puzzle of life. He is home for those who don't feel they belong. God is love and love keeps no record of wrongs. He is the truth tearing down the lie, I should be more. He says you are loved just as you are. And he is hope when you've nothing to look forward to. He's worth reaching out to, you've nothing to lose.
we should clap not for us for God <laughs> Amen. guys it's absolutely incredible to sing Christmas songs with you guys again it's been like 24 months it's the most fun um, next week you can sit if you want next week Saturday night proper carol service Sunday Tesco's car park Chris Stingle, karaoke Chris Stingle, you have to sign up, it's all on Church Suite. Uh, what else have we got website. on the website? Um, crib service Christmas Eve, midnight communion Christmas Eve, Christmas morning we'll see you, Boxing Day, if anyone wants to come, <laughs> someone's doing church, it will be on at 10 o'clock. <laughs> you won't see me. Uh, fab. Uh, happy Christmas. Nice to see you all. God bless. <laughs>